Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nikki LaRose. I'm a celebrity makeup artist based in Los Angeles. And for today's video, I am super excited because I wanted to sit down and talk about some really common makeup mistakes that I see on either social media or in real life. And I wanna show you simple and easy ways to fix them. So let's get right into it. So let's start with the first mistake. And to me, that is applying your foundation with your fingertips. Now this might be an unpopular opinion because the argument that I've always heard is that it's so fast and your fingers are your best tool. They can be, totally. They definitely can be, don't get me wrong. But when you're applying your foundation, there's just nothing like having the proper tool to blend it on in a beautiful and seamless way. So I'm gonna apply one side of my foundation with my fingertips like I hear people and I see people do very often. And on the other side, I'll be applying it with one of my favorite foundation brushes. So let's get into the finger side first. So I'll be using the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I'm gonna pump out just a little bit on the top of my hand. So starting with bare skin, I just have some skin prep on. I'm gonna take my clean fingertips and apply to the side of my face. Now, the argument that I hear a lot when people tell me that they apply their foundation with their fingertips is that they're in a hurry and they don't have time to do it any other way. That's fine. I completely understand the sentiment behind that. I do my makeup five days out of the week in a, an extreme hurry. So I totally get that. However, it doesn't take more time to grab a really good foundation brush and to apply it with a tool instead of your fingers. And now let's say you're someone that's on the go and you're applying your foundation in the car before work, which I'm totally guilty of that. I do that all the time. When you're done applying your foundation with your fingertips, what do you do with your foundation covered fingers? Do you get on your steering wheel? Do you get on your clothes? Do you get on your seatbelt? You know what I mean? It just, it's such a mess. And if you apply it properly with a nice tool, like a brush, you don't have to worry about that. You put it in a bag, it's safe, it's clean. You don't have to worry about the mess and the cleanup. And also for my people that have long nails, do you wanna get foundation under your nails and have them stain your nails? It, it's just not, it's not convenient to me. Like it, it kind of defeats the purpose of being convenient. So this is one side applied with my fingers. It's not horrible. It's definitely not horrible. But then what do you do with this, right? So this is like my, my issue is having all this foundation, getting into my rings, getting on my clothing, getting on my seat, getting wherever I am, uh, if I'm in my car, if I'm at home, you have to then wash it off and you really kind of need a makeup wipe to wash this off, to be quite honest. Otherwise you're gonna be using a ton of soap just to get this off your hands. So pause please, let me grab a makeup wipe. So all of that to say, yes, it's still quick and it's still easy to apply it with your fingertips, but then you have the headache of cleaning up the aftermath. And I feel like that's just not the most efficient way to do your makeup. Now, the other complaint I have with this technique is I don't feel like you're getting a proper blend. Yeah, I could dig my finger on my nose to blend it out, but that just seems like so much trouble. It looks fine, but it could look so much better. So let me show you now how to apply it with a good foundation brush. That's gonna make it so much easier. So I'm gonna pump out the same amount of that foundation on a palette this time. And now I'm gonna grab one of my favorite foundation brushes. This is a BK Beauty 106 brush. This just makes your application and your blending process so much easier. So I'm gonna take that clean brush, I'm gonna dip into the pumped out foundation. I'm gonna work it into the bristles just a little bit and I'm gonna start in the center of my face like I usually do where I have the most redness and where I need the most coverage. Now I'm gonna work in the stamping motion to initially apply it. This is gonna ensure that it's locked onto my skin. It's gonna really make sure it like adheres to my skin right away. Also, if you're applying it in this motion, you're gonna maintain a lot of the coverage. You're not gonna be overly blending it off to the point where it, it just disperses into nothing. Something to think about if you wanna maintain coverage and you wanna really build up the coverage, you wanna pat it and press it into the skin, almost in a stippling and a stamping motion. And then for the areas that you want a little less coverage and you want it to be a little more natural, you can switch up your motion and just blend it out in little circular motions. Same thing, I'm gonna work around my forehead. And for me too, this is a game changer because I, I'm obviously starting out with my brows on. And if I wanted to really blend with my fingertips around my brows, I would, it'd be really hard, it'd be miserable. But just by using the edge of this makeup brush, I'm getting around my brows without disrupting them, without messing them up, which, you know, I'm definitely trying to avoid that because it takes me a long time to do my brows. So that side is done. I'm happy with the amount of coverage. I'm happy with the blend. I feel like this is just, blend it into my skin. It's not sitting on top of my skin. It feels amazing. It feels like I don't have anything on. This side, believe it or not, I can feel the weight of this side on my skin. 
Whereas this side feels like I really don't have anything on genuinely. So same amount of time as far as the application goes. So no, you're not saving time, but you're being more efficient with your time because then afterwards, you don't have the cleanup issue of having foundation all over your fingers, in your nails, getting it all over the place, messing your clothes up. It's just a win-win. And just one more thing to note, this is not gonna be the most impactful thing to see on camera. However, in person, completely different, completely different. You will look like you just have gorgeous skin. You won't look like you have a face full of makeup on. So it just, the way it looks in person is worth it right there to just utilize a good foundation brush. I promise you, it's gonna be a game changer for you. Now this next makeup mistake is something that I see pretty commonly in both the professional makeup world and also in like the beauty influencer world. I see it all over the place. So I wanna deep dive and talk about this tip and that is where you apply your concealer and the right and wrong way. Now, it's not really a matter of right and wrong. However, there's a more flattering way to apply your concealer, especially depending on your age and your features. And then there's a slightly less flattering way to apply your concealer. Now on this side, I'll be applying the makeup mistake. And on this side, I'll be applying the concealer in a more flattering way. So taking my e.l.f. camo concealer in light sand, and this is gonna take you back to 2014. Just wanna warn you, okay? So wrong side over here, we're gonna take this doe foot. We're gonna apply a ton, okay? And we're gonna do a big, long 2014 upside down triangle. And listen, I did my makeup like this too in 2014 and 13 and 15. Totally guilty, especially for me too. I have dark circles. So I jumped on this technique and I was like, oh yeah, give me like all the brightness, all the coverage, all those things. I want more and more and more concealer. But as you get older and also just as your style changes and you try new things, you realize there's a more flattering way to wear your concealer. Now, before I blend this out, I'm gonna apply the more flattering way on this side. So taking the same doe foot, I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of the excess just so it's not so intense. As you can see, I have the most darkness right here in this inner part of my eye. And this is customizable, okay? This is just, this is just supposed to be a helpful guide. You can apply more if you want, you can apply less, but overall, get my eye a little lift. Now, the reason why this is a good technique and the reason why that there's been such a huge upswing of people, mainly on TikTok and also Instagram, showing you that this way is better than this way is because you're leaving out this big gap of product right here and there's a reason for that. So when we smile, when we talk, when we do all these things, when we're animated, when we're laughing, when we're having fun, when we're eating, when we're just living and breathing, this is the area that's gonna get a lot of traction, a lot of movement. But also this area right here, it's a direct connection to the ball of your cheek, like the bulk of your cheek, the cute apple of your cheek. So when you put too much concealer here, you lose a huge amount of your cheek. So you're actually minimizing the appearance of your beautiful cheeks. And I think cheeks on everyone are just, there's such a stunning feature. There's such a beautiful feature that needs to be enhanced. So when you're applying concealer in this area specifically, you lose, you lose a lot of that beautiful cheek. But for a lot of people that don't want to minimize their cheek and the appearance of it, leave this area blank and just maintain the coverage right here where you typically need it the most. And right here for like more of a brightened and lifted effect. So now let's grab a sponge. I'm gonna blend this in. So now I'll be showing you two different techniques on how to blend out these two applications. On this side, I'll be using a damp beauty sponge and I'm gonna start to just pat it in. Now there's nothing wrong with using a damp beauty sponge or a damp beauty blender. I do this all the time. I love this technique. However, when you're applying such a huge amount of product and then you're going in with a damp, very bulky sponge, what happens is you're gonna lose a lot of the control when you're buffing it in with a tool this big. So it was already in a big spot of my face. It was already taking up the bulk of my cheek and my under eye. But since I'm using such a big tool, it's still bringing it further down my cheek than I even first applied it to. And granted, it's gonna look flawless. Totally looks flawless. But my cheek 
it's really pale. It's really fair. It's definitely minimized. It's not brought out. It's not enhanced in any way, shape or form. So now on this side, I'm gonna show you how to blend in your concealer just in a softer way with a small blending brush. This is just a Sephora 26 eyeshadow brush. This is great for blending out concealer. So I'm gonna take this. Before I blend it out, I'm gonna use a patting motion to maintain the coverage and to keep it in one spot, like the main spot that I applied it in. So I keep that coverage and I maintain the control that I want. So I'm not gonna be blending it all over the place and losing that control. I'm gonna keep it in that specific spot and then lightly blend it out. So taking a blending brush, I'm gonna tap it. Just tapping it into place. And then with whatever's left over on my brush, I could start to just blend that across. So you have a little coverage, you still want a little coverage. And then patting it up towards my temple. This is of course going to give your eye like a little lift up and like a sculpt up. Okay, now that the product is patted in, I've maintained the coverage, I've maintained the control, taking whatever's left over and I'm just gonna blend out the edge. There's no harsh lines. So you don't see where it visibly starts and stops. Blend into my tear ducts for a little extra brightness in the spot. Blend across my lash line where any creasing might happen. This is also gonna to help to remove a little bit of the excess product so that it doesn't crease throughout the day or it has less of a chance of creasing. Now let's take a look at both sides. This side, definitely more natural, way more youthful. If you're someone who has more wrinkles under their eyes or if you have more mature skin, you're gonna wanna stick to sides like this because it's just overall, it's a more flattering way to wear your under eye concealer. Also, if you're not trying to minimize your cheeks and if you are, go for it. You can apply it this way, it's totally fine. But if you're not trying to minimize the appearance of your cheeks, you're gonna to wanna to stick to an application in this particular way because you don't lose your features in the process. Now on camera, I wanna say this side, it probably looks ridiculously flawless. And it is ridiculously flawless because I have a ton of coverage in this area. So of course it's going to look boom, perfect. But I wanna point out, these mistakes, they're going to make a huge difference in person in particular. So if you're walking down the street or if you're in a meeting or if you're at the office in person, this is going to be a very visible, very obvious amount of makeup. And if you're not going for that, you're gonna to wanna to do a side more like this. This looks natural. This looks a lot more like you have just flawless skin and not like you're wearing two layers of concealer under your eyes. Now this next make mistake is all about how you set this concealer under your eyes. So one way is going to be applied with a powder brush, like a traditional powder brush. The other side will be with one of my favorites, a powder puff. This is from Amazon. I'll make sure it's linked in the description box. Let me show you both sides and the difference it's going to make. So I'll be using the same powder on both sides. This is just the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I have a little mini one because I ran out of my full size. I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna pour it out into a tissue that's right below me. So the mistake that I see all the time is people taking a large powder brush or even just a medium sized powder brush like this one and applying their setting powder under their eyes and kind of hoping for the best. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna dip into that powder. I'm gonna kind of tap off a little bit of the excess. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to buff it under my eyes. And I see this happen all the time. It's a really aggressive way of powdering your under eyes and I just don't recommend it. So I'm gonna, you see a lot of this, a lot of dragging, a lot of tugging, a lot of poking. And brushes like this don't feel good under your eyes. They just don't. They feel spiky, they feel prickly, they feel itchy, they leave hairs. <laughs> and it's fine, it's gonna get the job done but there's such a better way to apply powder under your eyes. And let me show you what I prefer to do instead. So taking the same bit of powder, I'm gonna work a good amount into my powder puff and with the excess, I'm gonna just push it into the palm of my hand. This is gonna give me a nice smooth, even application where there's no patchiness. It's gonna be evenly dispersed on my powder puff. So taking that, I'm gonna press this under my eye and a really nice, delicate, soft, relaxing manner. This isn't gonna feel like an assault under your eye. It's gonna feel like a, a really soft cottony pillow just like hitting your face. Now I actually prefer a decent amount of powder under my eyes. I want to look really flawless, but I don't apply it all at once. I instead work in more thin layers, unless I'm baking, then that's, that's very different. But I'm gonna do two thin layers of this powder and then I'll be done setting it. So going in with my second coat of powder. 
And I'm really bringing this up to the side of my nose. This is like one of my favorite techniques. You probably see me do it all the time. And then bringing it up towards my temple. And that is both under eyes powdered and set. One is with a very prickly and just too large of a brush. And the other is with a really soft, really gentle powder puff. Now this is something that's gonna be so impactful in person, just like all those other mistakes and then the solution that I'm giving you all. These are gonna make a huge difference when you're face to face with people and you want your makeup to just look natural, but flawless. These are the things you're gonna to wanna to utilize. So this side may appear just fine. It might look flawless, but this side in person, I'm telling you, you're going to look like your under eyes are airbrushed. Okay, this next makeup mistake is all about your contour placement. And this is something that I see happen all the time. And that is applying your contour way too low on your face and then therefore bringing down your features. I wanna talk about where we're supposed to contour, where we're told to contour. And that is right here in the hollow of our cheek. And that's fine. And that's, that's a good guideline to go for, but, if you're looking to enhance your appearance and give it more of a lifted and sculpted effect, what you're going to want to do is kind of cheat. You're going to actually want to place that contour much further above where that hollow is in your cheek. So use this as a guide, right? That's totally fair. But then bring it a little bit further up. So on this side, let me show you what it looks like when you go a little too low on your contour. And then especially when you blend it out, it gets lower and lower. And then I'll show you an easy way to correct it. So taking the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt in Medium, let's actually go for it. Let's apply this directly to our cheeks, which is another mistake that I see happen all the time. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go right into the hollow, right here. Cause that's where the hollow is. And also bring it a little too far out. It's not the most flattering way to wear your contour. So I'm gonna take a blending brush. It's just an e.l.f. Cosmetics Duo Complexion brush. Taking that, and I'm gonna start to blend it out, which is what you do. Now it's in the hollow. So it's it's on paper, right? This is the correct place to apply your contour, but there's a much more flattering way to place your contour and to wear it. So let me show you that in just a second. Contour is blended in, it's there. You can definitely see it. Now it's not doing much for my face. Now taking the same soft sculpt from Makeup by Mario, Instead of directly applying this to my cheek, I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna dip into that product and get a decent amount, just like that. And now here's my hollow, I'm gonna go right above it. And I'm gonna stamp it on. Now I'm gonna work in very tight tapping motions. I'm not gonna buff all over the place. I'm not gonna overly blend it. I'm gonna keep it really precise, really clean in this one spot. So just tapping that into place. Now going really high up, it's gonna feel very odd at first to apply your contour this high up on your cheeks because normally this is where you'd see your highlighter be placed, even your blush, and that's totally fine. You could still go in these spots with those products. So you're still gonna layer those products on top, but underneath you're gonna have created this lifted bone structure effect that's going to be so much more flattering in terms of like the placement. It's going to bring up the appearance of your cheeks rather than bring them down. Now this last makeup mistake for this video is going to be blush placement. And blush placement, it's going to have a lot of the same principles as our contour placement that we just applied. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you where you typically are told to place your blush, which is on the apples of your cheeks. Now, one of the tips I used to tell people way back in the day is the easiest way to apply your blush is to look straight ahead in the mirror, smile, and then apply your blush on the apples. That's fine, but it's a little misleading because once you stop smiling, what happens? Our cheeks go back down. So what ends up happening is your blush placement looks a little too low. And so if you start out with just no smile, you can really see where you wanna apply that blush in a more flattering way. So I'm gonna go the old traditional route of smiling and applying it to the apples. So taking one of my favorite blushes, the Dior Pink Blush, and a MAC 129 brush, old school blush brush. Top off the excess. So I'm gonna smile. Okay, I'm gonna hit my apples. Now again, I wanna just say, this is fine. It's fine, but it could be so much better. And if you have a heavier cheek, and you wanna give your cheek a more lifted appearance, then you're gonna to wanna to do the way I'm gonna show you on this side. Okay, so blush is applied to the apples. I'm smiling, I'm smiling, and then boom. Now I'm at rest, which is how we walk around most of the day, is at rest. We're not walking around 
puppy dogs and rainbows all day long. I mean, that's great if you do, but nine times out of 10, you're not probably walking around like that. Your, your face is going to be at rest. So, so what that means is your blush placement is gonna be just much lower than, than it is flattering. Now, how I want you to apply your blush is not smiling, same blush different brush. This is a discontinued Morphe brush. Okay, so same blush. I'm not going to smile. I'm going to look straight ahead into my mirror and I'm going to apply this blush in an upward motion. So starting at the highest point of my cheek. So not at the apple. I am starting at the very, the peak of my cheek. And this might take some getting used to. You might feel like this is really a weird placement and you're going to feel like you're applying this under your eye. And this is partially going under my eye, but what this does to your overall appearance of your face, what it does to your cheeks and your cheekbones, let's let's say you're trying to have supermodel cheeks and you're trying to give yourself the illusion that you have that kind of bone structure. This is where it's at. This is what you want to do. Now, let's say you have more mature skin and you're trying to go for a more lifted and youthful look to your appearance. Try this technique. I promise you that you will leave me a comment and you'll tell me that it's changed your overall makeup application. So with whatever's left over, a little bit of my temple, keeping it nice and bright and high up. Now I did apply a little extra just for impact so you can really see visually what I'm talking about as far as the placement goes. Now, this is the traditional side applied to the apples of our cheeks. It's pretty, but it's not doing anything extra for us, right? As far as our appearance goes, it's not giving us any kind of lift. It's, if anything, it's bringing down the appearance of your cheek. This side, on the other hand, I feel like I'm more awake. I feel like I have incredible bone structure. I feel like I'm just more lifted and youthful, to be quite honest. So these are just some of the most common makeup mistakes that I see on a regular basis and how to correct them. Don't worry, there'll be much more of these videos to come. I hope you find this video helpful. I know that you will. Leave me a comment if any of these techniques have changed the way you do your makeup. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can click on this one right here and I'll see you all soon. Bye.